Hi everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Mrs. Dadeja and I'm going to be reading Horrible Harriet. Horrible Harriet lived at school. She had a nest high up in the roof. Every morning, Harriet came down to attend class and hand in her homework. Her teacher, Mr. Boggle, couldn't see very well. He thought she was a good girl. She was helpful too. When someone was naughty, Harriet always told Mr. Boggle, Why can't there be more students like helpful Harriet? He often asked. But everyone else thought that one Harriet was quite enough. For as soon as Mr. Boggle turned his back, she was well and truly horrible Harriet, mean and nasty, cruel and wicked. Not surprisingly, horrible Harriet sat alone at lunchtimes. She loved to cook and her tasty meals took a lot of planning. Every afternoon when Mr. Boggle and the children had gone home, Horrible Harriet attended to her after-school chores. There were teachers to be fed. They lived in the cellar. And did Horrible Harriet's homework. Mr. Scruffy looked after her maths while Miss Plume took care of everything else. She'd been there for years and had even grown a wonderful little garden full of plants that liked the dark. If homework was late, Horrible Harriet cracked her whip. This made Mr. Scruffy, Scruffy hurry, but Miss Plume just growled and hissed. One day, a new boy came to school. His name was Athol Egghead, and he was very polite. How do you do, he said when he introduced, when he introduced to the class. Athol found making friends difficult. He was a shy boy and, were, and was used to being overlooked. When Mr. Boggle asked for someone to take care of him, Horrible Harriet was quick to volunteer. Splendid, said Mr. Boggle. I know you'll make Athel feel very welcome. Naturally, Horrible Harriet made sure Athel's first day was memorable. In fact, she wanted to make it a day Athel would never forget when he lost his lunch. Horrible Harriet insisted that he try her bat ear and monster tail soup. Hmm, not bad, said Ethel. After lunch, Ethel had a charm, met a charming chicken. Why, Miss Chicken, said Ethel, polite as ever, how nice of you to join me. Miss Chicken was speechless. In the morning, Har Horrible Harriet found a lovely card on her desk. Thank you for a wonderful day, it said again, from A. Egghead. I knew you were just the one to welcome the new boy, said Mr. Boggle. It was a proud moment for Horrible Harriet. Not long after that, Harriet showed Ethel some bold new steps when he joined her for dancing lessons. Then, in art class, Ethel Egghead helped Harriet with her self-portrait. More pink in the cheeks, he suggested. Harriet and Ethel were having a marvellous time. But down in the cellar, Mr. Scruffy and Miss Plume were growing restless. They were on emergency rations. Mr. Scruffy had raided his secret chocolate supply, while Miss Plume had to make do with her spare homework. One lunchtime, Ethel had bad news. I must leave, he said quietly. Then he gave her a special gift, a painting signed, For My Friend Harriet. When the time came, Harriet was very sad to see him go. So she locked herself away for five whole days. But on the sixth day, Harriet remembered there was work to be done. There were teachers to be fed. She had to get out and keep an eye on things. Her old friends had been ne neglected. Mr. Boggle was certainly glad to see her back. If only there were more students like Harriet, 
he said to the class. But everyone else thought that one horrible Harriet was more than enough. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, come down to the library at recess and lunchtime and there's plenty of more books to read.